year, uh, last year, we know that uh, every year in the annual conference, I give an update on, on what we have been doing. Uh, we call this the state of CTI. I have about 20 minutes. And uh, those of you who were here last year might also remember that uh, uh, we were about to go through the renewal process, a five year renewal of CPI last year, and just completed the, the uh, renewal report. And uh, I'm happy to report to you that uh, months following the, the conference last year, the uh, Senate Graduate and Research uh, Subcommittee approved our, our renewal request. So we are now renewed for five years. But as part of this uh, uh, renewal process, the renewal proposal, we identified seven strategic priorities. This is what we put to the university that the reason they should uh, renew us is because we have to focus on these seven things. So what I'm going to do in the next uh, 20 minutes or so is to walk you through each of them and very briefly say what we have been doing in each of these areas. And, and necessarily I can't go through the details. So, uh, in the slides, there are uh, hyperlinks all over the place that will take you to more information. And you can find the slides if you go to our website, cpi.org.ca. There's a uh, program page that you can easily find, and in there, there's a video. Uh, so let me go through each of them uh, one by one. The first one is uh, uh, strengthening engagement with the CPI community. So when I took over as uh, uh, the executive director, a message I heard very clearly from, from the faculty, from the students, uh, from other stakeholders is that uh, they want a great engagement. They want to be able to feel and uh, act as a you know, sort of, uh, meaningful collective. Um, so, to that end, we have been uh, 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 undertaking, uh, continuing some of the activities that we have, but also initiating uh, several uh, new um, endeavors. Uh, so the first one is uh, highlighting the, the, the our biggest asset, which is the research strength of our faculty across all disciplines. Uh, so we had two new initiatives. One is called CPI Spotlights. Again, if you follow the link, you will see that. CPI Spotlights is an article series where regularly we focus on one CPI member and the research that they are doing. Behind the firewall is a short video series. Again, we have had three or four videos already. Uh, where we focus on one faculty member and uh, in an accessible way the faculty member explains the kind of research that they are doing. Um, the second uh, 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 strengthening uh, engagement with community initiative is, is a series of newsletters. So we already had, right, right from the time that I took over, we had a monthly executive director uh, email to our, our members that goes out uh, in the middle of every month where I tell them about the, the most important developments. But we've augmented that with two other newsletters. Uh, one is a public newsletter called The Privacy Perspective. Um, you can subscribe to it uh, from our website. Uh, and, and there we sort of uh, highlight both what happens at uh, CPI, but also uh, items that are of general interest uh, to the public, uh, to the, to the public at large. We also have a new initiative by students. And I'll tell a little bit more about that. But the students themselves are uh, I've organized and have brought out a, a new sector called the Digital Overground, uh, and, and that's uh, intended towards our students, primarily graduate students, but inclusive of all students. Um, so this is, uh, like I said, this is an initiative that's run by the students itself. So last year, before last year, we had this notion of faculty membership in CPI, but we didn't have a notion of student membership. So we, we kick-started that uh, during the past year, so now there's like a student mailing list and, and students uh, meet regularly, they have organized events and they have taken the initiative to do this uh, regular newsletter. Uh, we're also uh, very happy to announce the Faculty Fellow Program. Uh, this, is, this is going to be launched in the, in the coming months. Uh, what this means is that we, we engage with industry partners, as you saw with MasterCard, with Blackberry, with Aurea uh, and others. Um, and, uh, and as part of the engagement, they pay a membership fee, and we use these funds, uh, so far we have been using it for scholarships and, and, uh, and awards, but we also propose to use it for faculty fellowship, meaning that we recognize one faculty member for their research and, and give them a, a stipend as part of their scholarship, uh, part of their fellowship. Uh, but in return, um, they have a great level of engagement with CPI as well as with the, the, uh, the partner that's supporting it. So for example, we, we, as you can imagine, we get lots of media requests or uh, 
and over there is a, a new story. And uh, yeah, I think the fellows would be at the forefront of uh, Indigenous uh, um, We already talked about student awards, if you saw uh, the graduate scholarship, but I'll talk about another student award that we got. So how do we know we are, that we are doing it uh, correctly? And we didn't really have a mechanism before, so we have now instituted uh, uh, what we call a pulse check survey, uh, which is a series of simple questions. And uh, for example, we asked like, you know, is CPI doing what the what CPI members think that we should be doing? Um, this is the first time we ran it. We have a score of 3.87. Is that good or bad? Clearly, there is room for improvement. But we are going to do it every year so that we can actually track whether we are really doing what our community is. We are putting ourselves out on a limb and we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah. The second uh, uh, major strategic priority is nurture the NCC. NCC is National Cybersecurity Consortium. So again, those of you who remember, CPI along with four other university cybersecurity institutes uh, set up NCC as a uh, federal not-for-profit. This happened, it was formally done in 2020. And these five institutes together worked towards making a proposal to the government, the federal government for their uh, CSIN, cybersecurity, Innovation Network Initiative. And, uh, and in 2021, uh, NCC was chosen as the lead recipient for an $80 million, uh, uh, $80 million grant from the uh, So last year, we had a situation where, so until that point, the five of us, two of the, two of the others are here, uh, Ali Gorani and uh, Ken Mark and my colleagues, the five of us were running NCC uh, along with all of other people. What has happened during the last year is NCC has been stood up as, a, as, a, as its own organization. NCC has its own uh, uh, leadership team and uh, is uh, pretty much fully staffed. And NCC also went through the first call for proposals where we are expecting results anytime. Uh, so let me take this moment to recognize two of the uh, uh, members of the NCC leadership team who are here. Uh, Mary Hendrickson, who is the, uh, the uh, Executive uh, Director of NCC, and, uh, and my friend and colleague Ken Barker, who was one of the directors uh, from the five institutes, he has now stepped in to be the Scientific Director of uh, NCC. Uh, so, if you have questions about NCC, those of you have been asking me, now you know what to ask. <laughs> uh, so, so, going forward, so, so we need to form this role that our role is not to run NCC because it's an independent organization, we are to nurture NCC. The first thing we did was when the first call came about, in order for NCC to be successful, there has to be enough proposals. So we took it as our responsibility to sort of rally the troops here at Waterloo uh, to, uh, to make uh, as good proposals as we could. So we, uh, we had 12 researchers involved, we made eight proposals, seven of them R&D. One is a training proposal in Watts Street, Watts Street is the University of Waterloo arm that is, uh, that is a task with General education, executive education, workforce training, and so on. Uh, and, and this is currently in progress, and we are waiting to hear from NCC anytime now about the results of this. Uh, um, the second thing that we did was the University of Waterloo, as um, other four universities, pitched in to help NCC get started. So before, for example, Mary was hired, there were staff from uh, the university second to, to uh, NCC to start up the organization. Uh, Charmaine himself uh, uh, is right now the, the chair of the board. Uh, so they spend a lot of effort and time in getting NCC started. Uh, what CPI's role has been is helping in this process. So, for example, running up the call for proposals, there were a number of documents that we needed to complete and, and uh, get approved by, I said, the federal government uh, organizations is responsible for the CSIN program. We also help with uh, staff The third thing is facts facilitate excellence in research. And this is something that we have been doing uh, uh, even before, and we continue to, to do that. Um, uh, one of the things that I want to highlight is uh, two years ago we made a big investment on, uh, on uh, purchasing compute servers because many of our researchers uh, do research that is very compute intensive, that like people do data science, people do machine learning, and so on. During the last year, we augmented that with, with more high-performance high uh, processes. 
Uh, and this has been a, a real success. I mean, we, we were initially concerned that uh, there are many places where people can find their computer resources, so why should CPI provide yet another one? Uh, and if you look back at the evidence, these are fully used all the time. Second thing that uh, we do to facilitate research is seed grants. Seed grants are small grants that we give to our faculty members uh, with the view that they would use this to launch something bigger, either a bigger proposal uh, from in for industry or public funding or a bigger collaborative initiative. Uh, this year we peripherally focused on interdisciplinary research and, and to concretize that we did our seed grant calls with other institutes. Namely, this, this year we will be collaborating with two other institutes, Water AI, which is our AI institute, and Robohub, which is Roba Hub, which is our robotics institute. And we gave six C uh, uh, grants jointly with them. And uh, the last one uh, is, as usual, we, we want to help our members apply for large grants. And, and we have done that both for very big grants, like this first one here, which is a Sicilian uh, overall. Grant uh, led by a CTM member Ram Sinkaba uh, and uh, also uh, Diego Baradas is an OPI. Uh, we have helped uh, similar large grants that are still in the process, so for example, the ORFRE, Ontario Research Fund Research Excellence. A grant proposal that's uh, also overall volume 6 million uh, with uh, 2 million uh, potential funding from the province if uh, selected. And then the number of NCC grants are done. Uh, we also help with smaller grants. We are not only focused on bigger grants, but smaller initiatives like uh, uh, and, uh, Adam Molnar and Adam Molnar from Arts and Sam Gartner from CS are uh, organizing a workshop on uh, interdisciplinary research inside security and CPS and uh, helping to organize that. Uh, the next thing is facilitating and strengthening, uh, strengthening and broadening the training. So traditionally, university level institutes and centers have focused on research and not training. Uh, but it's, it's clear to everyone that uh, training is an important aspect of uh, developing some security capabilities. And, uh, everyone knows and agrees that there is, a, there is an acute uh, talent shortage. Uh, so we have taken that as a sort of a first class uh, uh, strategy priority for us. Uh, so even though it's the, it's the faculties that and that training that are demanded to be trained. So our job is not to offer training ourselves, but to facilitate training. And we do that in a number of ways. So you already saw the um, uh, graduate scholarship, so we use uh, funding from uh, industry partners to offer scholarships. We have also launched a new undergraduate award scheme, so the graduate scholarships are for graduate students. Undergraduate award scheme, uh, we ran a pilot last year. You may remember that I told you about this last year. This year we have formally instituted that. We look at uh, every term, we have three terms in model. Every term we look at courses that have significant cybersecurity con con content, undergraduate level courses, and uh, uh, offer uh, uh, one or more awards depending on the enrollment to each of those courses, uh, where the winner would be chosen by the instructor and uh, objective and primary criteria is how well they do the course. So we have, uh, uh, during the spring term, which is the summer, summer is called spring and model. Uh, during the spring term, we, we uh, awarded five uh, undergraduate awards. You will see some of them uh, in the afternoon session. And uh, currently, there are a number of courses uh, that are going on. The exact number of awards will depend on enrollment, and we will be like that for seven awards. Um, the second thing that we have been doing is uh, helping CPF faculty develop courses that have close interaction with industry. So you saw that we made a proposal to NCC with a comprehensive training program. Uh, but for some of those courses that we are going to develop in the program, we essentially did a matchmaking task. We found uh, an instructor who's developing a course and a company that has technology that can be relevant for the course and, and brought them together. So this is an example of the NCC software. We, we look forward to doing more of these. And the last thing is that I told you about Wattspeed, and we are collaborating with Wattspeed for professional uh, upskilling. Uh, so, for example, one of the courses that we are going to develop as part of our NCC proposal, if it's successful, uh, we will take that course content, which is intended as a university level course, and then convert that to a workforce training course uh, that can be useful for people who are already 
Um, the next thing is build partnerships. That was also a high priority for us, build partnerships with industry as well as other stakeholders. You already heard about uh, a new partner, uh, MasterCard. Before that, we had a long standing partnership with uh, Blackberry and Aurea. Uh, so, partners, CPA partners are people who are uh, members of CPI but also have substantially greater uh, investment and engagement with uh, CPI in terms of funding projects like this one, in the case of uh, uh, MasterCard or, or in other ways. Uh, so specifically with uh, MasterCard, the, the, they are in addition to supporting uh, student scholarships and awards. The bulk of their funding is going to go for research in this uh, area called uh, trusted data. And there are uh, five faculty members, CPI members, across two different faculties who would be the PIs, uh, investigators, uh, looking at different aspects of uh, trusted data. Uh, we are very eager to continue this kind of collaboration. We have actually hired a Business Development Manager, uh, Nana. Nana, if you're here, raise your hand. She's here. Um, there are a number of different ways in which uh, industry can engage. So, partner is the highest level, uh, but there are also other levels. Uh, you can be a sponsor, you can be a scholarship sponsor, we only focus on uh, scholarships. Um, uh, partners and sponsors have the, the ability to say how their membership fees should be uh, spent. Is it for scholarships, is it for CPI faculty fellow program, is it for some other type of engagement? So if you're interested, come talk to me or, or to Colin or uh, Dana. Uh, the next thing is influencing public policy. So as, uh, as you know, as, uh, as many of us have also realized over time that cybersecurity and privacy is not a single disciplinary uh, endeavor. Many of us are technologists, but the success of the, the research that we produce depends on the policy environment as well. And so it's, it's evident for us that we need to use our skills, our CPA members who are experts in public policy and, and law and economics and so on, and use their skills to uh, bring them together with our technology expertise and then use that to educate and inform policy makers. Uh, so the first uh, such initiative that happened last year was a uh, was a workshop on cybersecurity privacy and AI in health that was organized by Anil Shen. Anil Shen is my associate director of CPI. This was a very successful event. He managed to get uh, funding not only from CPI but also from other organizations, specifically uh, Stats Canada and Health Canada, and uh, conducted a one day workshop in Ottawa, uh, targeted mainly for experts from Stats Canada and Health Canada, uh, informing them about the challenges that. Uh, in this area and the technological, potential technological solutions that are there as well. And as you might know, our president, this is a topic that's close to our president's heart, so he also was there for the whole workshop. And, uh, and uh, we have got very strong, uh, very positive feedback, and we are looking to repeat that uh, possibly in other contexts, for example, for provincial government and so on. So, again, if you are if you're interested in this kind of uh, thing, uh, arranging a similar event, come talk to us. The second such event uh, influencing policy was uh, led by uh, Resma Mamani, who is also a CPA member from the Faculty of Arts, on the weaponization of disinformation in Canada. So, this was again a successful uh, workshop that was held here by Julia Red Hall, uh, and uh, focusing on her expertise in this uh, discipline. Both of these were triggered by CPA and CPI intellectuals. So finally, the last one is promoting cybersecurity and privacy awareness. Uh, I'm not going to sort of walk you through this, but I'll just uh, mention uh, some highlights. So we've uh, specifically targeted uh, opportunities for CPI expertise and technology to be uh, showcased in the media, such as the scientific American article that uh, uh, interviewed uh, on what about the fair generated content, which is a uh, Hot topic uh, in the US government as well as We have significantly increased our social media presence and public communication. We have actually hired uh, Harminder Kool, who says, uh, uh, sitting over there. Uh, he's leading our revamped uh, communication strategy and you know, all these new things that we've we heard about these uh, uh, magazines, uh, newsletters. Uh, 
video series, the spotlight series, and so on. Uh, uh, finally, we have uh, uh, CPA Talks, which is a, a public health lecture series that's continuing to do that, uh, plus a number of other ways in which we can inform the public. Uh, and these are uh, ongoing. So with that, I'll put the summary here. These are the, the seven strategic areas, and I hope I give you a flavor of what we have been doing uh, in these areas. And, uh, and like I said, each of these slides have uh, links, so if you want to know more, uh, go to cpa.org.ca, you get these slides, and then you can learn uh, more information. And then, as always, feel free to catch any of us and uh, so with that, thanks, and we have time for our questions.